Hey guys, welcome to the secret history living inside of your aquarium. So today, we noticed a problem. It's actually tonight. And I don't know if you can see that problem. And if you're an experienced aquarist, you may know what that problem is. But let me show you. Let's zoom in. So, we have a hydra. And... I'm trying not to startle it, but trying to focus, see if we can get it in focus. There you go. So, what this is, is think of it like a sea anemone. But, it's much worse than a sea anemone. So these things are very fascinating. They they come in about, they're, they're not just from poor water conditions. They're introduced from a source. And they have these tentacles if you can make that out I'm sorry it's so grainy let's see if we can zoom in even more um, let's push it up against the glass there we go come on alright so if you look carefully you can see let me try to get the light just right on it there we go okay so if you look carefully you can see that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight arms, um, and it's reaching out, and you can see there's a baby shrimp there, and he just reached out and he tried to grab it, and now he's recoiled, and so these things look like, um, they look like a stem with arms on it, and then they have a foot that they glue, but they can use those tentacles there. There we, go. there we go. Come on, flashlight, really. So they can use those tentacles that they have to reach out into the water and grab things. Now these things can get almost an inch long. Um, and really the best way to kill them is to grab them and to just physically remove them from your tank. If, if it's a small infestation, but they are very interesting scientifically because it appears that their stem cells do not age or that they regenerate. So basically you can cut off any piece of this thing and it'll keep growing. So you need to physically remove it and either put it in water under over 105 or 110 degrees or you need to um, put it in very cold water. And even then, it'll go dormant oftentimes rather than die. So it usually fixes itself to a rock or some sort of uh, plant. And we're going to turn the lights on really quick just to see what happens. But hopefully, I can grab a hold of it and get rid of it with some tweezers. So, hold on, bear with me one moment here. Of course, I'm trying to do this in the dark because I didn't want to scare it off to get it on camera for you guys. But another interesting thing was in 1998, they first had a paper about uh, them being immortal. And that paper was then questioned heavily. Here we go. Now we got light. That paper was then questioned heavily, and it appears as though the Hydra has disappeared. Oh, no, it's still there, but it has shrunk. So it's trying not to be seen, and it's next to these shrimp, and it has stinger cells, and... That shrimp, you can tell, is afraid of it. Um, it's all very hard to see with this camera. I wish I had a better camera for you guys. But this is a hydra, and it is a little creature that grows in fish tanks. And if you have fish, a lot of times they just eat them, so you don't notice them. But if you have a shrimp tank, you'll definitely see them. And they're capable, when they're full grown, of taking down fry and definitely these small shrimplets. Um, let's see if we can get... Okay, so there it is in its most compact state. And these 
produce asexually and they produce sexually. So they literally just split off or throw an arm off and that will regrow into its entire body somewhere and it clones itself. Or it will, uh, if conditions are really good, if there's a lot of food for it, it will actually, um, and you can see Daphne and things like that floating by, well, maybe we'll see it catch something. Um, but if conditions are really good for it, then it produces sexually and actually they get together um, in their, like, they can move in their larval stage and they can reproduce before affixing to something. But they move very oddly. They move by, they can either suddenly move by flexing their, t the, those tentacles that you see waving there, or they can kind of somersault an inchworm up the rock. So, just something to watch out for. If you want to get rid of them, I mean, the hot water, but you're going to kill your fish if you did that, right? So, um, the best way is to remove them by hand, and then to have snails help eat them, uh, or to reduce the amount of uh, rubbish and leftover food left in the tank. Um, but yeah, very fascinating animal. It seems that the cells do not age which is very interesting for human studies. Now here we have a little blue shrimp, and we'll, we're going to see what happens as it gets close, but those arms have stinging cells just like a jellyfish, and usually they eat Daphnia and Cyclops, but they are also capable of eating other things. Oh, and you see he just got stung. This, now he's cowering back, and I hope he's okay. Um, but yeah, so now the Cyclops has closed in. See, it, it was seeing if it could catch something. It's going to do it again. Now we got another shrimp. This is a tangerine shrimp that baby. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see here, my battery's going to run low soon, so pardon me if you lose me. It's the middle of the night when I notice this. But, <clears throat> oh, got him too. So, definitely a pest, right, you guys? So, I'm going to have to reach in there and grab him and kill him. Um, but I definitely know there's more of them. They come in on plants or in water, um, and they're fairly common, but, um, usually the fish will eat them before you notice them, and in this case we have no fish in the tank because we've got lots of baby shrimp. So, really you can use gouramis or paradise fish, uh, or mollies to eradicate them, or you can use, um, uh, what is it, permanganate, um, some sort of permanganate, magnesium per permanganate possibly, or copper sulfide to kill them, but both those things harm fish and live animals, so I'm not going to use those. So we may need to rent a gourami <laughs> to eat these things, because looks like we're going to get a sting one more time here. Oop, yep. And so, it's basically a vicious sea anemone called a hydra that can move around. So keep a look out for these little micro pests or predators, because as they grow, or if an infestation happens, they can actually do quite a bit of damage in your tank to fry at small fish. So, um, alright guys, thanks for watching, and if you learned something, if I'm keeping your pet safe, can I get a like? And I know this isn't the best quality filming, and it's a little shaky because it's so zoomed in, but uh, this this thing's probably only a couple millimeters tall and, and clear. So, all right, guys. Well, take care of yourselves. Take care of your fish. Subscribe if, uh, if this helps you out, um, and if you enjoy these videos and the information in them. And uh, I think we'll be trying to look at this guy under the microscope when I yank him out of here, uh, if, if he remains intact and if I can catch him with tweezers. So I hope you guys have a good night. If you're feeling extra feisty and you want to put these baby shrimp through college, uh, I have a Patreon page, and that link will be in the description. So take care, guys, and uh, study up on this crazy little creature, the Hydra, whose babies are called Medusas or many-headed beasts, just like the Hydra. Medusa had snakes for heads. And, uh, oh, stung again. So, definitely a pest. And let's zoom out so I can give you a sense of scale. 
it's on that rock and it, you can't even see it now so um, definitely gonna get it out of there because we don't need any medusas or hydras and we don't want it to replicate there's a lot of food in here for all the baby shrimp there's pond snails and uh, we're gonna try to get rid of this thing now so take care guys